Welcome to the Writer's Edge Podcast, a platform to share conversations about the health and wellness of horse and rider. I'm your host, Farley Schweigert. Hey y'all, it's Farley with Writer's Edge, and today I want to talk about how 30 days does not equal 90. So I've mentioned that a couple times on the podcast uh, lately. I talked about it two weeks ago um, when Phil Haugen was nice enough to sit down to have a conversation with me. And I really, I really want to talk about it in a global sense. Um, So I I feel, I feel a little bit of a um, random conversation coming on. So buckle up, come with me, and I promise I'll bring it all back around. So the last two weeks on the podcast, time has come up. Um, several times in the conversation with Phil, in the conversation with Donna Kay, uh, time, time keeps coming up. And uh, if you've been following along with uh, my horse, Charlie's progress, he is, um, we're actually, (laughs) we're actually, um, as of this recording, 15 days away from 90 days. We are oh so close. So very close. (laughs) So we'll see. But um, this just hit me this summer. Um, 30 days does not equal 90 days. And gosh, that can be used in so many different arenas. So we're going to we're going to take a tour around. I came up with that with waiting on Charlie because um, I'm human (laughs) unfortunately, sometimes, and uh, I'm impatient. Charlie uh, has been a horse that I've gotten excited about. It's the first horse I've been excited about in quite some time. And while he's not finished, and he's not really even close to being finished, I was really enjoying the spring and the early summer with him. And his progress. I've really found a horse that I was excited about the process with. And, uh, you know, it's the, you know, it was the middle of July, I reckon. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I've been a good little PT. I've been lasering him and, and been doing his rehab stuff. Can, can we not go back to work now? And I was like, oh, 30 days does not equal 90. How impatient. And uh, it just, I don't know, it just dawned on me. And it just helped me so much go, okay, 30 days not equal 90. We've got to wait. And so that really came out of, you know, the rehab, the tissue healing time of things. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about horses or humans. We're, we're impatient with the rehab time. Let's, let's talk about our horses for a minute. You know, we have something go on and we go to the vet and we get the diagnosis Doc, how soon, how soon can I get back to the arena? Well, I would really like him off for, you know, X number of weeks. Oh, Doc, I've already, you know, spent this big entry fee to go to this big barrel race or this big rope in. Can can we get him back for that? Can we get him back for that? And sometimes I would say, most of the time, actually, I would say, why? Why? They'll, they'll make that event again. They will, um, it, there'll be another one. There'll be another one like it. Of course, that's a little bit hard to say in a COVID world as events keep getting canceled. Um, you know, and even events into 2021, Denver canceled this week and, uh, different things, but it'll come back around. It'll, it'll, it'll come back around. Um, I've been a little bit, uh, down in the mouth this week because it's Pendleton week and the Pendleton Roundup and Pendleton, Oregon is one of my favorite, favorite places. They'll come back. We'll let her back again next year. And if not, we'll 
do it again in 22. We'll get all this figured out. But our horses, our horses go because we ask them to. So let's play the long game here. Let's play the long game with their rehab because of a lot of reasons. They do what we ask because we ask them to. So let's give them the best possible care, the best possible treatment and rehab that we can with the resources available. Not everybody uh, can afford to go to a rehab center. They're getting, um, they're getting more popular. They're more um, starting and different things. But that's not even what I'm talking about. There are plenty of things that you can do at home. Gosh, you could even, in this day and age, you could pick up the old FaceTime or the laptop and have a virtual conversation with a physical therapist, even about your horse. You can set up a virtual visit with your horse with me, and we can talk through a treatment plan and talk and coordinate it with your vet. Just things as simple as that. And, and you can put in the work because at the end of the day, we need Mother Nature and we need time. Physical therapy, veterinary medicine can do a lot of amazing things. And, but the best that we can do is we can nudge. We can often nudge Mother Nature a little bit faster. But we, we, can't, we can't alter her altogether. We're not that good. <laughs> we've been working real hard to try. And in some cases, we've nudged her a lot faster. But... Horses need time. The horse's body is amazing in how it can heal and take care of itself, just like the human body. But 30 days does not equal 90 days. So let's let's put in the time. Let's put in the work on the front end to play the long game. Because if we do that, we decrease the chances of re-injury or re-insult to the place, which will cause, in the long run, more time off more vet bills. So let's get it, let's do it right the first time. And then go back. It's heartbreaking. I, I'm, I am not going to lie. It is heartbreaking to get a diagnosis that is altering your competition plans. It's particularly if they're altering them for 90 days or more, a long period of time. It's why I'm. <laughs> it's why you need a remuda of horses, and a million dollars, and the lottery ticket, and all the things. If you're wanting to be competitive and go, go down the road at whatever level, but if you're wanting to get a little further down the road, sometimes it takes it takes a lot of horses to do that, because it, things are going to happen. We are breeding our horses. We're training our horses um, to levels that we never have before. And uh, sometimes they just literally will outrun the capacities of their tissue. Or these horses are not in the shape that they need to be in. The riders underestimate their shape, their endurance, their uh, air. And run them three weekends in a row or rope, you know, 20 head of steers three days in a row or whatever. And their tissue's not ready to take that. And so it does start to break down. And then they can't tell us, hey, dude, this is not working for me. And it takes a while to find it before we can get it treated. 30 days does not equal, does not equal 90 it doesn't equal 90 when we're talking about training and fitness and working out for for horses or humans. You know, if you've been following along with my hashtag in the Arena 365 series, um, and we've been talking a lot about the core, the pelvis, motor control, the rope pin, you know, and... It, it takes, it's, it's the same principle when I go do my workout in the mornings. I just say 30 days is not equal 90, but I'm seeing those small steps and small steps do equal forward motion. Small steps 
can be compounded on. And that compound effect is what we're after. That will be what gets us to the next level. We're going to talk in these next couple weeks more about motor control and, and fascial restriction and different things like that. Um, so today we're going to just stay on the topic of time and 30 days. 30 days is not equal 90. I've been working on different things this summer, uh, particularly in the motor control aspect of things. And, and it is so much better. And then I go back to the rope pin in between uh, getting 12 inches of rain. <laughs> we actually... We actually need some right now, believe it or not. Um, I believe that's maybe the first time I've said that in a very long time. But I've gone back to the rope pen and things are better. <laughs> and they are not amazing yet. <laughs> the amount of motor control I've gotten has helped me do X, Y, and Z. But then I still have A through F that are not where they need to be yet. And that gets frustrating too. It gets frustrating to the point of, do I really want to continue doing this? You know, um, maybe, maybe I need to do something else. But the fact is, if I don't get this motor control under, under control, <laughs> then I'm not going to get... Uh, to the next step of strengthening, to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. So it's time. It's time, and it's not fun, and it's not sexy, but it's time. It is time spent in the saddle. It's time spent on the exercise mat. It's time spent in the barn rehabbing. Feel the other day in the in the podcast was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna steal that because it is so appropriate to the conversation that I have in my barn. You know, particularly in the regards of starting horses or uh, tuning horses up. Somewhere our industry latched on to 30 days, and over the last probably I'd say 10, 15 years. We've gotten a little bit further out to 90 days. And it, honestly, in reality, if you're looking at advanced level horses and broke horses, 90 days is barely scratching the surface when you really dive into horsemanship. But it's a hell of a lot better than 30 days. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing with training our horses, with tuning our horses. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in one session. And it just, it takes that effort. It takes that consistent effort over that period of time. Uh, today, I stepped back on one of my other horses that I've been off of for a couple of weeks. Just timing and life and, and schedules and commutes. Uh, I've had to go back to my commute for my day job. And uh, it's cutting into my riding time. <laughs> but I got back on red tonight, and he was exactly where I uh, I had I had a little bit higher expectation for him because I have higher expectations for everybody. I I reckon, uh, particularly for myself and my goals. So. My expectations are always higher than they should be. But when I analyzed the session, I went, you know what? He is appropriately where he should be. He's exactly where he should be for the situation. He's been off for, gosh, probably three weeks. And up until then, he was getting ridden four to five times a week. And, uh, he was starting to make some progress. He's a little bit, he's a little bit hard headed, <laughs> which fits in. Unfortunately fits in my barn pretty well. Um, I don't know why that is because I'm not hard headed one iota. I'm very determined. Uh, I have a friend that says that she's not hard headed. She's determined. So 
I'm going to steal that one. But Red, Red was exactly where I, where he should have been for the amount of time he's had off and what we were working on prior to his time off. A, a lot of what he was um, getting asked to do was to transition quickly. If I asked him for a trot, stop thinking about it and step off into a trot. Lope, vice versa. We were also working a lot on his face. And it was better. It was less racehorse pushy. He's had a real hard time coming off of, you know, the racehorse push uh, from the track. And he was less pushy, but it wasn't amazing yet. But you know what? He had a good day. He he did he did just fine, and he'll do better tomorrow. But it's because I've had a mind shift, mindset shift. Say that three times fast. That I can look at that situation and see all of the good, and be realistic about his understanding, his perspective, and my expectations. Not even just a short time ago, you know, a year ago or maybe a little bit more, I'd be like, that sucker hasn't retained anything. We were here, 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 whatever. He should be here, 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 you know, because my expectations did not always meet my actions. And just because I want it, I want it to happen faster. I want it to happen easier. I want it to be better sooner so that we can go on and do fun things because we're not, we're in the grind right now. We're in the process. We're in the 90 days that's going to turn into 90 times a lot, (laughs) but it's okay because what's the alternative? The alternative is to either not do it or rush him. And we all know if we rush 9.8 times out of 10, that doesn't hold together. There's no long game with a rushed horse. If they're extremely talented, you might get through uh, a very lucrative short game, but you won't get through a long game. At all. So 30 days does not equal 90. Whether we're talking about tissue healing, whether we're talking about working out, whether we're talking about training horses. So I hope you can commiserate with me on the 30 days does not equal 90. And I hope it gives you a little bit of a fresh perspective of your situation no matter, no matter which of those three situations we're talking about. If you need help with any of those situations, whether it being um, a better workout plan for yourself, um, a consult with your horse's rehab, or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, contact me at... Uh, uh, the website, writersedgetherapy.com, or my Facebook or Instagram pages, either one. And I'll be happy to help you. I'll be happy to commiserate with you. And then I give you a perspective. Because another thing I've learned in this 90-day journey is it's not so much fun when the rabbit's got the gun. It's not so much fun when you're rehabbing your own horses. Because... You never leave them. <laughs> you're there with them. You get them rehabbed. You, um, but you're still, you know, you're you're all the things. And so it's, um, well, it's been a fine rehab and it's gone very smooth for Chuck. I don't think uh, my gut says we're not going to have the best uh, report when we go back to the vet here in about two weeks. But I'm hoping I'll be. I'm hoping my gut's at least wrong about that one. It tends to not be wrong, and I tend to not listen to it sometimes because, again, I'm determined, not hard-headed. But um, 
well, when that time comes, we will rework the plan and go from there. Because in Chuck's situation, the only the, the next step for him is just going back to work. He he doesn't have anywhere he has to be. So we'll get this we'll get the situation taken care of, and then we'll move to the next. And that's exactly how we'll do it. Doesn't mean I won't be grumbly about it. Doesn't mean my tribe won't get sad face emojis if that happens. But we'll just pick it up and put it back together. So if you need help with your situation, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I'll be happy to help you or help coordinate where you need to go to next. And we'll go from there. As always, thanks for tuning in and uh, listening to the podcast. It's one of my favorite things. Share it with your friends. Make sure you've subscribed to the podcast wherever you, wherever you listen to them. And as always, I will see you down the road. Thank you for listening to Rider's Edge Podcast. For show notes and other thoughts, head over to ridersedgetherapy.com. If you would like to stay connected and continue the conversation, head over to my free Facebook group, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider. Thanks for continuing the conversation, and as always, I will see you down the road.